guessing where we're gonna look at rationalizing the denominator. Okay, we're gonna start by explaining the word rational. When you're in grade nine, you were told about rational and irrational numbers. The definition that was given to you is that a rational number is a number where it can be written as a fraction, where the denominator and the numerator are integers. So when you look at this number, you have a square root of 3 as the denominator. The square root of 3 is not a rational number. That's why the lesson is about rationalizing the denominator. So we want our denominator to be a rational number, to be a number that can be written in the form of a over b, where b, where b is not equal to 0, and a and b are integers. So we're going to look at that. So how do you do that? When you have a one term like we have, and the term is not a rational number, what you do, you multiply by a very nice one. We know that any number that is multiplied by 1 is that number. So, and we also know that any number that is the same, the numerator and the denominator, it is 1. So, this is a fancy 1. What you do, you take that, that denominator that is not rational. You make it that, whatever number you have, whatever square root you have over the same square root. This is a 1. So, basically, I am not changing this number because I have a 1. But my 1 is nice and fancy. So when you multiply with a 1, you're going to rationalize the denominator. You're going to go 2 times square root 3. You're going to go 2 square root 3. And then you go square root 3 times square root 3. Then you get a 3. So my denominator is now rational. So you have rationalized the denominator. But you do this method when you have only one term as a denominator. Let's just look at an example where... You have two terms as a denominator. Right. This example that we're going to look at, our denominator has two terms. We have a term, a minus, and another term. So when we have this, we are doing it differently than the other one. You remember this lesson is all about rationalizing the denominator. So a denominator is the bottom part of the fraction. So we want to get rid of the square root in the bottom part, not in the whole fraction. We just want to get rid of it in the bottom part. So with this one, for you to rationalize the denominator, you also write a fancy one. But this one, you need to remember the difference of two squares. So you're going to have a square root of 3. When you have a minus, you'll have a plus, then 1. Then you divide by the same thing, square root 3 plus 1. Right, this is 1. This is a fancy one. You need to remember that when you have a, a something and a number something, when you have a minus, the middle term will cancel. So it's a difference of two squares that we taught in grade eight and, and in nine and ten. You write the first term, you change the sign, write the second term. Then let's multiply. We're gonna multiply the top one, that one, and that one. Square root three times square root three will be three. And then square root three times one. That and that will be plus square root 3. Then we look at the denominator. Squ Let's put this bracket to have binomials. Square root 3 times square root 3 is 3. Square root 3. Oh, now, because we have difference of two squares, you remember, with a difference of two squares, you want to lose the middle part. So you only do that. Square root 3 times square root 3 is 3, and we're going to do that. 1 times 1 is 1. Negative times positive is negative. Difference of two squares. Then we'll have 3 plus square root 3 over 3 minus 1 is 2. So your denominator is rational. You have rationalized the denominator. Right? I'm going to give you an example that you're going to try out before you watch me do, do it, do it for you. Let's look at that. Right, I, I hope you have done this example before. Before you are watching this, you are continuing with this video. You paused, did the example, and then let's continue. Right. We're going to multiply. Fancy one. 
square root 2 minus 2 over square root 2 minus 2. Then it has to be exactly the same, the numerator and the denominator. Then it's a 1. And it has to be the same with this one except for the sign. Then you have difference of 2 squares. Right, let's multiply. 8 times square root 2 is 8 square root 2. 8 times 2 minus 16 mm -hmm. divided by square root 2 times square root 2 is 2. Positive times negative is negative. 2 times 2 is 4. Then when you look at the numerator, you have a common factor of 8. So you have 8 square root 2 minus 8 times 2 will give you 16. Then when you look at the denominator, 2 minus 4 is minus 2, right? Because we have only factors, you can cancel. 2 into 2 goes once, 2 into 8 goes 4 times. Then you can um, multiply. 2 and that one divided by negative, you get a negative 4 square root 2. And then 2 times that one. Divided by and get a positive eight. Then this is your answer. It's done like that. I hope uh, you try this and practice, 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 and get it right. Usually in an exam, they will ask you to prove. Then you'll take one side, rationalize it, and hope it looks like the other side. Thank you for watching.